Hi, I'm Meg Medina, and I can't wait to share an inside scoop about myself and my book, Mango, Abuela, and Me. What amount is based on my life? I think like 100%, right? I, I Look, it's like 98% because what, what's, what's based on my life is the truth of the feeling. And that's what has to be true in all the books. Like the authenticity of loving family, connecting with family, connecting with friends, like building yourself, all of those things are 100% true. And so what I do in my books is that I look around my actual life for the things that I remember. I give myself that freedom to change people and to mix people so that I can have enough distance from the story so that I'm not writing memoir, that I'm writing fiction, and that I can tell the truth. I think connecting. Like that first page, she comes to us in winter. My grandparents did come in winter. They came through, not through Ellis Island, they came through JFK Airport. And the memory that I have of that is coming down, you know, standing in my building at the, the top of the stairs. My mother had said our family was arriving. And um, I was afraid. Like I had been looking forward to them. Like the only family I knew in this country was my mother and my sister, right? And then suddenly my mother springs on me that this, my, mi familia was coming. And I just didn't know what to make of it. I did speak Spanish, unlike the narrator in the, in the book. But there were still all these ways that my grandmother and I couldn't really connect. And I bought her this parrot because I wanted, she had always been telling me stories of her life in Cuba where she owned a parrot that sat, she said, on a gigantic um, brass ring in the window. And it would, you know, squawk to the all, all the neighbors, oh, what and she loved that bird. It talked a lot and, and so on. And so I was growing up in Queens where we had pigeons, right? And they don't say much except. Burr. And I thought this was the most amazing thing. And I wanted to just create connection with my grandmother. So I bought this little green parrot who incidentally never did say a word the entire time that we owned it, which was decades. But, you know, when I was writing this book and I was thinking about kids and grandparents and language, you know, it, it came, it, you know, it was based on a memory and I just sort of expanded it. Um, this notion of how, how is it that we communicate love to each other? How do we communicate family to each other? And so I created this bird who does talk, Mango, and Mango becomes part of that family, the engine of the family, that communication becomes the center, the way that we, we grow as a family. The gift, I think, of, of growing up in a bilingual household, I think, is, is ways of knowing and understanding the world. Because there are, there are different phrases, there are different ways that we communicate in each one of those languages that really speaks in some way to the essence of that culture. You know, Cubans will say, le zumba el mango, which means, holy moly, that's crazy. But it literally means throw the mango. Like, what does that mean in English? You can't really translate these things. But there's something really um, deeply specific about the idioms, you know? I want other Latino writers to join me, the ones who are coming after me. You know, I'm standing on, on the shoulders of, you know, Nicolas Amor and Margarita Engel and Matt and, and so on. And so I'm climbing up now and now I'm ready to hold up the next one. So apurense, get to the writing. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed reading the book and sharing it with your favorite young readers.